Okay, so let's see what some of the early, the early community thought about this. We are going to look at eight hadith that appear in the collection of al-Bukhari. Um, and I have taken the translation from the MSA database, um, but I do want to spend a little, of, a little time trying to read the Arabic. Is that okay with y'all? Can we, can we try to do that? Okay. Um, so, because because that'll help you really see how a little bit more of how this structured. And the reason why I'm saying that is because um, if you look closely, and we will, if we look closely at the English translation, it actually doesn't include all of what's in the Arabic. Um, most notably, the English translation that you find uh, in the database, and not only here, but also like for example. There's a very common um, translation of Bukhari by al Has any Does anybody know that one? It comes in like three volumes, three, three, three um, volumes in each book, and then it comes in three books. Okay, that one doesn't include the translations of the chapter headings. And the chapter headings are really important. Why are the chapter headings important? Because Bukhari was writing a musannaf. A musannaf is a legal collection of hadith, okay? It's organized by legal topic. And that means that he is not just jumbling all the hadith together. He's not saying, let's find all the hadith about this khayt al-abiyad and khayt al-asr, we'll stick them all together. He is actually um, forwarding very carefully an argument. And the argument is made through the chapter headings that he gives and the ordering that he gives. So, so the muhaddith, the, the muhaddith who's also a faqih, in other words, somebody like al-Bukhari who is writing a musannaf, which is a legal compendium, right? Like Ibn Hanbal, his, his, um, his, con his collection was not a legal collection. His is entirely arranged differently. It's arranged by narrator. Right? But Bukhari is a legal collector. So his job is to make it possible for fuqaha to do precisely what you said, for fuqaha to, to extract applicable, applicable meanings from the hadith. So sometimes there are hadith that don't actually, that are not considered applicable by the fuqaha. Right? There are things that, that some of the Sahaba did that the later fuqaha don't consider to be uh, valid for practice. But the job of the, but the faqih can just ignore those hadith. But the muhaddith can't just ignore those hadith. He has to include them if they're, if they're sound. He has to include them. But he has to frame them in a way that their applicability is not in question.